Tenerife is the largest island of the Canary Archipelago, called a continent in miniature by some. Volcanoes, beaches and misty forests are waiting for tourists here. Get to know this charming island better and see what attractions it has to offer. Tenerife, just like the entire Canary Islands archipelago, is of volcanic origin. Geologically, it is a relatively young island as it began to form about 30 million years ago. The Atlantic and African tectonic plates collided then and underwater volcanoes appeared, which over time formed, among others, Tenerife and other islands of the archipelago. Numerous volcanic eruptions formed mountains and erosion changed the landscape. Tenerife owes its extremely diverse panorama to these forces. Some associate Tenerife with the mythical lost Atlantis. The highest peak of the archipelago and Spain is located in Tenerife. This is Pico del Tida volcano which is 3,715 meters above sea level but is actually much higher. It reaches almost 7,500 meters from the undersea base to the top and is also the highest peak on the Atlantic islands. The climate of Tenerife is also very interesting. The island lies in the subtropical zone, however, the mountain ranges on the island and the influence of two sea currents, warm Gulf Stream and cool Canary Current, cause that in addition to the subtropical climate, there are also semi-desert, desert and Mediterranean climates present. There are large differences in temperature and precipitation between the mountains and the coast. If you are going to the local mountains, take warm clothes with you. In winter tida is often covered with snow. Although Tenerife is the largest island of the archipelago, it is not particularly large. It only has 2,034 square kilometers, is 80 kilometers long and 50 kilometers wide. It offers however a lot of interesting places and attractions. It is best to explore it by a rented car. Local public transport is also quite good. To begin with, take a look at the capital, that is Santa Cruz de Tenerife. It is the largest city on the island, which combines historic architecture with modern buildings. Add wonderful flora, beaches, parties and excellent cuisine and you will receive the best holiday spot. Start your Santa Cruz tour from the old town. Plaza de España is the largest square in the city with a big artificial lake and a fountain. Despite its modern look, the square has a long history. It was built on the ruins of the 16th century Castillo de San Cristobal. You can see the remains of the castle in the underground gallery. If you go to Tenerife at the end of the carnival period, there is a wonderful feast waiting for you in Plaza de España, which ends with the burial of the sardine. From Plaza de España, walk towards Plaza de la Iglesia. On the way, take a look at colonial-style buildings. In the square you will see Nuestra Señora de la Concepción, an interesting church in the Canarian style. Focus on the high tower and typical Canarian balconies located on the main facade. Castillo de San Juan Batista, a 17th century castle used for militarily purposes until 1924, is located nearby. Today it is a military museum. You don't have to take notes. We have included all the practical info in the description below the video. That's where you can also find links with accommodation, tickets to attractions and tips on how to pay abroad so as not to overpay on currency conversions. What else is worth seeing? Certainly Torre de San Andres Tower which played an important role in the attack of English ships led by Horatio Nelson himself, Titro Gamera, the oldest theatre on the island, the Museum of Nature and Man and Auditorio de Tenerife, modern concert hall. Every nature lover should also visit local parks. The most interesting ones are Palmito Botanical Garden with a collection of palm trees and Garcia Sanabria Park, where you will not only see beautiful flowers but also a large collection of cacti and succulents. Santa Cruz is not the only place worth visiting. From the current capital you can take a tram to San Cristobal de la Laguna, the first capital of the island. The old town has not changed much here since it was founded in the 16th century. One of the former residences, Casa Lacaro, now houses a museum of the history of Tenerife. 
The island has excellent conditions for observing the night sky, no wonder then that there is a museum of science and space in the Laguna. Don't miss the island's oldest church, Iglesia de la Concepción, and a 16th century cathedral. Although it has been rebuilt many times, it is very interesting not only from the outside but also inside, where you can see a lot of sacral art items. Garachico, which was destroyed by a volcanic eruption in the 18th century, has a completely different character. From Castillo de San Miguel there is a beautiful panorama of the Atlantic and the city. You can observe how the lava has enlarged the island. You can also take a swim in the natural pools of El Calatán. They were also formed by a volcano when lava created a barrier separating part of the ocean. Villa de la Aratava is considered one of the most beautiful villages on the island. When you see well-preserved and restored colonial buildings and atmospheric churches, you will immediately travel back in time. Local Ibero-American Museum of Craftsmanship is very interesting too. You should also visit one of the several gardens where you can admire unique vegetation of Tenerife. The port city of Puerto de la Cruz is located near La Aratava. Black Beach, Old Market, Plaza de Chaco de los Camarones and interesting old architecture are just some of the attractions of this town. It is worth coming here especially to see Laura Park, which is a parrot park. It is a private zoological and botanical garden with many interesting animals, including parrots, dolphins, killer whales and penguins. Tenerife is a volcanic island. Its highest peak is Pico de Tida, which is still an active volcano. It is one of the most visited places on the island. There is a cable car running almost to the top, but you can also get there using one of the hiking trails. However, to climb the very top of the volcano, you need a permit, which you have to apply for in advance because there are a lot of people willing to do so. What can you see during the expedition? Truly lunar landscape, lots of lava and other volcanic formations. At the very top you will feel like in hell because you can clearly smell the sulfur there. This is a sign that the volcano is only dormant. The panoramas from the top are also great unless there are clouds. Remember that you are at high altitude, so the weather can vary. Therefore, take something warm to wear because it can be really windy and cold there. Tenerife is definitely a mountainous island. It is not only the Pico de Tida Massif but also Tento, Anaga and Adeje Mountains. You will find difficult and easy, shorter and longer trails there. The most interesting places, apart from Tida, of course, include Acantilados de los Gigantes, which are gigantic seaside cliffs with a height of up to 600 meters in the Tento Mountains. It is best to admire them from canoes that can be rented in the town of Los Gigantes. You can get to one of the beaches among the cliffs by the famous Masca Gorge. The hike is quite challenging and requires booking in advance. In the Tento Mountains there is also Parque Rural de Teno Reserve where you will see, among other things, the dragon tree which is a species of Dracaena, the symbol of the island. In the mountains of Adeje there is another unusual gorge, Barranco del Infino, or Hell's Gorge which leads to the largest waterfall on the island. The name was given to it because it is on average 10 degrees warmer there than in other parts of the island. You will not only see interesting rock formations but also many species of Dracaena and ferns there. The Anaga Mountains which offer stunning natural beauty are less popular. The so-called Cloud Forest and Laurel Forest are most often visited. Many of the plants growing here are relics from distant geological eras, and frequent rains and fogs give the forests an exceptionally mysterious and magical atmosphere. A real tidbit is also rain falling horizontally there. Many interesting trails have been prepared here, including the Trail of the Senses, the Forest of Puzzles, Laurel Forests or the Enchanted Forest. An undoubted attraction of Tenerife are the beaches where you can sunbathe all year round. In the ranking of beaches, Playa de las Tresitas will always be one of the top places. This beach, located near the capital, has been made of sand brought straight from the Sahara. The sand is exceptionally soft and golden there. Palm trees growing on the sand are an additional attraction. Holidaymakers also appreciate the Del Duque Beach with white sand and golden Los Cristianos with sarin sand, located in the southwest of the island. However, many people choose more exotic beaches with black, volcanic sand. The most popular ones are Playa de la Arena near Los Gigantes and Playa de Teno. 
Getting to the latter one takes some effort but the black sand, lava rocks and the westernmost lighthouse are really worth it. Playa Jardin, located near Puerto de la Cruz, with black sand too, is perfectly maintained. This is probably one of the best places if you are traveling with your family. There are also fantastic amusement parks in Tenerife where not only children have a great time. Europe's largest water theme park, Sajan Park, is decorated in Thai style. There are impressive slides and a swimming pool with the largest artificial waves in the world. Near Siam Park there is Jungle Park where you will see a lot of interesting animals and plants. Various species of felines, including lions and tigers, delight. Lago Marchnes is definitely worth a visit. This is not a typical water park, but rather a complex of swimming pools. They were designed by the famous Canarian architect, Cesar Manrique, who tries to maximize the beauty of the Canary Islands instead of transforming them. Looking at Lago Marchenez, you can say that he has achieved his goal. If you prefer an active holiday instead of sunbathing, Tenerife will also be a great choice. You already know about mountain hiking, but there are also great routes for cyclists of all levels. The weather is also good to practice this sport. In many places along the coast you can do various water sports such as diving, snorkeling, sailing or kayaking. Water scooters and jet skis are also popular. You can try parachuting and if you are fascinated by surfing, the island allows both beginners and advanced surfers to practice this sport. We have presented you with the most interesting places and leisure opportunities in Tenerife. However, if you visit this beautiful island, you will surely find many other places that will delight you. If you're already planning your trip, you can find accommodation and tickets to attractions on the spot in the links under the video description. You can also order a card for cheap payments abroad the same way. Press the bell and subscribe to our channel if you want to receive notifications about new episodes. Have a nice trip!